What's up everybody, Just Bruin here. Welcome back to the home brewery for a very special video and a very special beer. We have passed 2,000 subscribers here on YouTube and that's uh, a really cool accomplishment, um, not one that I thought about hitting um, when I first started my channel. Uh, a lot of the videos that I make, really it comes down to what I, what I want to see out there. Uh, I see a lot of videos um, that get uploaded. I watch a lot of uh, brew content and there are times where I just want to see something uploaded or I want to try something. Uh, and being able to share with that with people is really cool and watching that number grow uh, is also really cool. So I want to say thank you for watching. Um, I want to say thank you to people like CH from Homebrew for Life who helped bolster my channel from the very, very beginning um, and Kyle from Clawhammer. Uh, when I was able to, uh, when I took the opportunity to, to collab with them, um, why would you not? Um, I was already uh, gathering a little bit of steam um, and that put me well over uh, a thousand subscribers and here we are at 2,000. The beer that I'm going to go over, uh, I actually brewed as my 1,000 subscriber uh, beer. But when, I, when the Clawhammer videos went up, um, my subscriber count kind of exploded, um, which is really cool and it's awesome to see. Um, but what was my 1,000 subscriber beer is now my 2,000 subscriber beer, just because uh, the snowball was moving a little too fast for me. Uh, but I held on to it. Um, I've got some essentially conditioning waiting for this moment, and I cannot wait to share it with you. If this is the kind of content that you like, feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. You can support me and the channel by visiting justbrewing.com where you can donate and you can purchase purchase some merch where all merch proceeds are going to go to charity. Let's talk about the beer because I think there's a little bit to talk about on this one. So uh, when, I put, when I was putting a recipe together, I wanted something, I kind of essentially started at the very end. I knew what I wanted. I wanted a beer that you could drink uh, as part of a celebration. Um, and one of the first things that came to mind was champagne. People pop champagne, you know, bubbly when you're, when you're celebrating. So I thought, why not make a beer, but instead of using beer yeast, use champagne yeast. What would happen? Um, I started doing some research and a lot of it came down to, I mean, it's just, it's science. It's gonna, it's gonna work. You give yeast some sugar and it's gonna produce some alcohol. So the, 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 the yeast doesn't really care. Uh, so in, with that, uh, I started looking around what happens, you know, who's already doing this. And a lot of the times when you put champagne um, yeast in a beer, a, a lot of breweries that do it or home brewers will do it to further condition a beer to help dry it out if they don't wanna add you know, more sugar to the beer when you're, when you're bottling it. You can just add a little bit of champagne yeast. It will eat away at some of the sugars. It can eat more sugar than your typical beer yeast. Um, so it'll help dry it out a little bit. Um, so I wanted to play into that and I thought, you know, Belgian beers get quite dry. So why not make a, something like a, a rendition on a, a Belgian triple, for instance, or an, a Belgian golden strong um, that eventually turned into an American golden strong um, that was just based on the recipe and the ingredients that I used. And having used champagne yeast, it's technically a champagne golden strong or, or I guess a, uh, an American golden champagne beer. I don't know, I don't know what it's called, but that's the beauty of homebrew. You can do all this stuff um, and it doesn't really matter. It doesn't need to fit into a box. Um, as long as it tastes good to you and those that get to drink it, it doesn't really matter. I'm really excited to show this to you. Uh, it's been a while since uh, I've brewed this and I haven't actually tried it uh, out of the bottle. So this is gonna be really exciting and I can't wait. For this three gallon batch, we're gonna start with almost four and a half gallons of reverse osmosis water and we're gonna treat it. If you're looking for some of the specifics on this recipe, just check the link in the description. The grains themselves are going to be really, really simple. We're going with about 88% two row and about two and a half percent crystal 40. The crystal 40 is going to give us just a little bit of color and the rest of our sugar is going to come from dextrose and we're going to add that in right around the top of the boil. We're going to mash for one hour and we're going to do that at 149 degrees Fahrenheit. To help aid in drying this beer out and eating up as many sugars as possible, we're gonna add ultra firm and that's going to help break down some of those sugar chains to make it easier to eat away and that's gonna hence dry out the beer and add just a little bit more alcohol to the beer. Uh, 
At the end of our mash, we're going to yank our grains and get this bad boy to a boil. Once we approach a boil, I'm gonna drain some of my wort out of the kettle and into a bucket so I can stir in my dextrose. Now, I'd like to do this when adding certain things into the kettle so that one, when I'm stirring, I'm not having to worry about where the, the burner is, um, the element, and I don't wanna you know, scratch up my, my kettle. So I'll just put it into a bucket and uh, add it that way. I'll stir it in, and then once I notice that it's all dissolved, I will add it back into the kettle. From there, we're going to set a timer for one hour and add in our first hop addition that's gonna be about 45 IBUs of Summit. I'm going with Summit for some of the peppery, spicy, grassy notes that it has. Since we're trying to imitate a Belgian Golden Strong here, um, I think this type of hop really plays into that. Uh, and we're actually gonna add a little bit more, about 11 IBUs at 15 minutes left in the boil, really to help push some of those flavors and aromas. With five minutes left, we're going with Cluster. This is gonna help push some of those spicy floral aromas, um, and I'm really hoping that comes through in this beer. At the end of our boil, we're gonna chill it down and transfer it into a sanitized fermenter. I'm gonna aerate, and I'm gonna add an amylase enzyme here. This is very similar to Ultra Firm, where it's gonna help break down some of those sugar components, seal it up, and put it away where it was gonna sit at room temp for about two weeks. I did split this batch into a keg and some into bottles, and let me just let me just show you. Uh, uh, how about that? Not bad, right? Not bad. It's time to pop some bubbly. <laughs> cool. And here it is in a glass, the American Golden Strong. What do I call this thing? And here it is in a glass, the American Golden Strong fermented with champagne yeast. On the color, it does look a lot like what you would call an American Golden Strong. I mean, it's a lot like a dull orange peel color-ish. I mean, it's nice and orange, um, but it's not quite bright or uh, vibrant, something like a, uh, like a hazy would be. On the nose, I do get quite a bit of, of pepper and just maybe like a little bit of citrus and quite a bit of spice. Again, citrus, a little bit of pininess as well. I mentioned it earlier, I split this batch half kegged and half bottled, and there was actually a little bit of a difference. When I naturally carb using the you know carbonation tablets, which are just you know sugar cubes essentially, um, I used that to carbonate in the bottle, and the foam, the head on it was much more fluffy um, and uh, reminiscent of like champagne foam. And the forced carbonated beer looked a lot like a regular beer. I mean, the foam on it was normal, but it wasn't as pillowy or soft. Now it's a little uh, kind of, it's almost gone here, but it's sticking around nice and it did have a really nice soft mouthfeel um, on those first few sips. This beer turned out really, really cool and I could definitely see myself doing it again in the future. Thanks to everyone watching. Thank you for if you've made it this far into the video. Um, if it weren't for you, a lot of the beers and videos that I upload would kind of be pointless. So thanks for sticking around. Thanks for enjoying. Let me know in the comments if you want to see me do other things like this in the future. Thanks for viewing. Just Brewing.